Hey everyone, The Good Captain here. Welcome to my third video in my series on Axis and Allies Anniversary Edition. This video will cover the optional rule known as National Objectives, but I'm going to first spend a quick minute discussing why this video took so long to get out and upload to YouTube. So I actually had this video cut and ready to go within two weeks of the release of my previous video, but I held off on uploading it to YouTube because I was essentially confronted by a couple of face-to-face -face friends of mine who felt that I had the, or may have the wrong conclusion about this optional rule. Now to me, it was so obvious that this optional rule favored the Axis and favored it rather heavily that in the first video, I didn't spend much time going into why. And I'm reshooting this video now to speak to that segment of the audience who might not feel that it favors the Axis. And I'm gonna to try to deliver a coherent argument as to what's going on here and show why and how it imbalances the game in favor of that side. So first, what is a national objective? Uh, a national objective is a way to score extra IPCs rather than counting up the numbers and circles on the board at the end of your turn. These usually entail capturing a certain territory or series of territories and then collecting an extra five IPC bonus at the end of your turn. And the key is the at the end of your turn part, okay? That will come up in our dissection of each of these uh, national objectives. So let's first start with Germany. And I'm gonna use a few different visual aids here and we'll go through it slowly and hopefully you'll see the problem as we go through each one. So the first one for Germany is gain five IPCs if Axis powers control all of the following territories, France, Northwestern Europe, and Germany. So that's these three territories here. And yes, I've used roundels to highlight them. And I'm just gonna take a quick second and explain that all Germany has to do to qualify to collect this five IPCs is have these under control at the end of their player turn at the end of their player turn. So even if the United States or the UK take France or Northwestern Europe, as long as they're recaptured by either Italy or Germany, by the end of Germany's player turn, they will collect the five IPCs, okay? So a savvy German player should always collect this. It's a fairly easy one to acquire. Let's move to the next one. So the next is Germany will gain five IPCs if Axis powers control at least three of the following. Baltic States, East Poland, Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine, and or Belarusia. So there are five territories, and Germany only needs to have three to get this five IPC boost. So here's how that one looks. Now, all Germany needs to do is have control over three of these five at the end of their turn. Again, this is, in my opinion, just as easy to get as the France, Northwestern Europe, and Germany uh, plus five IPCs. Because even on the first turn, you're going for Operation Barbarossa, right? You're gonna knock out the Baltic States, East Poland, and the Ukraine, and you will knock them out. At least you should. If you're a savvy player, that should be no issue whatsoever. The third and final German national objective is if Axis powers control at least Karelia or the Caucasus, they do not have to have both to qualify for this, then they get an extra five IPCs. So this is how that national objective looks out on the board. The reason I have the Italian and the Japanese control marker down in the Caucasus is because it can happen that one of the other Axis powers actually secures this objective for Germany, as long as this territory is under Axis control at the end of Germany's turn, Germany will collect that five IPCs. Karelia, however, is the more likely culprit to fall. It usually, if you're playing a savvy Russian player with national objectives, won't fall earlier than turn four. But by turn four, five, six, Germany will probably snag Karelia or Caucasus um, and start, and at least pick that up once or twice if not permanently. But this national objective is, of course, not as easy as those first two. You, you kind of do have to earn this one as Germany. Okay, so off to the right side of my board, I'm gonna kind of track 
how many IPCs from National Objective each power is pulling off the board on the first turn, or at least the first turn. So we've got 10 for Germany. Pretty, pretty solidly, Germany's going to pick up 10. So we'll just kind of watch this grow over time. The next power that goes in turn sequence is the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union only has two national objectives, although one is worth 10. It's the only one that's worth 10. So we'll start with that one. And that is that if allied powers control at least three of the following territories, that's Norway, Finland, Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, Czech, Hungary, or the Balkans, the Soviets get the 10 IPCs. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the map. So here are the six territories involved in this national objective, and keep in mind that we need to flip three. And of course, two of those three should be Finland and Norway. These two objectives will likely flip at some point in the game to the allies. The real question is which of these four can or should be flipped. And in my opinion, this is only going to be done when the game is an allied win anyway. In other words, if Poland, Czech Hungary, the Balkans, or Bulgaria, Romania actually remain under positive allied control at the end of uh, the Soviet Union's turn, I, it, the game is probably an allied win anyway. So it's not, in my argument, helpful to the allies or to the Soviet Union. The second Soviet national objective is the, probably the strangest one of all. It's the only one that doesn't require that the Allies take and hold any kind of territory. It's a conditional national objective, and the condition is that if no other Allied forces are present in a territory controlled by the Soviet Union, and if the Soviets control Archangel, the Soviets get five IPCs. It says specifically that no other Allied forces can be present in a territory controlled by the Soviet Union. This means that if the Soviets pick up, say, Finland on their first or second turn, that Allied forces can't come into that territory or without disqualifying the Soviet Union from that national objective. It's not just originally controlled Soviet territories. The other condition is that Archangel must be under Allied control at the end of the Soviet turn. So if the Soviets are unable to retake Archangel from, say, a German uh, capture on the turn prior, then they're out five bucks. But the worst part about this national objective, in my opinion, is that it seems to discourage intercooperation between the allies. One of the fun parts of playing Axis and Allies as the allies is working together and trying to figure out how to have Russia survive long enough to win the game. And this seems to discourage uh, that type of cooperation. However, it is guaranteed to Russia at least on the first turn, so we will give that to them. So I'm going to put that five IPCs up there for Russia, but I'm going to put an asterisk next to it because as the game goes on, the demand for extra units from the Western Allies in Russia supersedes the value of that five IPCs. It becomes a moot point after a while. So if you're Russia, yeah, pick it up on turn one, two, probably three, but you know by turn four you're looking to get some help and that five IPCs just isn't probably going to be worth it. So next up is Japan. Japan is incredibly easy. All three of their national objectives are cake, so we should be able to breeze through this fairly quickly. The first is that Japan gains five IPCs if Axis powers control all of the following territories, and there are three listed. Let's take a quick look. So this is how this one looks on the board. As long as Japan retains control of the three initial territories it has on the Asian mainland, they get an extra five bucks. This is super easy. You're going to get, get this every single turn as the Japanese player. If you ever don't, it's very likely you're losing the game. The next national objectives. As long as Axis powers control at least four of the following territories, Japan will get five IPCs. And there are six territories listed. But let's take a look at these on the board. So here's how this looks. All you need, remember, is to control four of these at the end of your turn. So even in the 1941 setup, when you don't control these territories already, you're going to get them at the end of your first turn. You take East Indies and Borneo, which are unoccupied, Kwangtung in the Philippines, those with can and should go down, especially if you're using national objectives on the first turn. And as if you needed it, there's two safeties. If at any point you need 
you, you are disqualified and don't have the four territories, as long as you have New Guinea or the Solomons, you're good. This is, again, an incredibly easy national objective to pick up. Once you get it on the first turn for Japan in the 41 setup, you will likely never lose it. Let's take a look at the third and final national objective for Japan. And that is that Japan will gain five IPCs if Axis powers control at least one of the following, and there are three territories, Hawaiian Islands, Australia, or India. So Japan won't pick up this national objective on its first turn, but it is extremely highly likely that Japan will pick this up on its second turn. A savvy Japanese player should have no problem either picking off India or at the very least Australia on J2. Again, all they need is one. So when it comes to Japan's national objective money, absolutely they're going to get 10 IPCs in the first turn. Uh, but, and by the second turn they should have that 15 and a savvy Japanese player really won't lose that 15 for the rest of the game. The next power to go in turn sequence is the United Kingdom. And the first national objective for the UK is that the UK will gain five IPCs so long as they control the Eastern and Western Canada, Gibraltar, Egypt, Australia, and the Union of South Africa. That's all six territories. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the map. So I've got the camera set up here aimed at only three of the six territories that matter in this national objective. And I've done that for a reason, because the truth is if the United Kingdom gets this national objective at all, then it might get it on the first turn. But you'll hear in my German strategic video, I advocate very strongly for a G1 attack against Egypt that actually has a 74% chance of picking up that territory, not only winning, but actually securing the territory. But after turn one, it's very likely that one of the other Axis powers has secured either Australia, Gibraltar, or Egypt, and thereby removing this, uh, the opportunity for the British to get this anytime soon. The next national objective for the United Kingdom is that the UK will gain five IPCs if allied powers control any territory originally under Japan's control. Okay, so th this is one of the more bizarre national objectives. This is the only one that actually really requires another allied power to do it for the United Kingdom, because the United Kingdom is very likely going to be kicked out of the Pacific, if not by turn one, certainly by turn two. In other words, they're not gonna have the resources to go and take an originally controlled Japanese territory. Only the US might be able to do that. And the other problem here is that, um, you know, if you're playing the 42 setup, just a heads up, Wake and the Solomon Islands don't count. Those are not originally controlled Japanese territories, as you can tell by the roundel. Additionally, Manchuria and Kyongsu don't count. Notice the Chinese emblem. It has to be one of these six with the roundels. So Iwo Jima or the Carolan Islands are your most likely culprits. Uh, but the last uh, caveat here is that even if the United States captures one or both of these or any number of these islands, the Japanese will be able to take their turn and potentially counterattack to retake those territories before it gets to Britain's turn. Remember, it has to be under allied control at the end of Britain's turn. And since Japan goes before Britain, you can see the problem here. You have to survive Japanese counterattack in order for Britain to secure this five IPCs. Lastly, uh, for the United Kingdom, gain five IPCs if allied powers control at least one of the following territories, France or the Balkans. Okay, so we finally get to an interesting allied national objective. Uh, that five IPC kicker, for just for snagging the Balkans or France, this is actually, uh, if not doable, at least it's interesting. It forces the German and the Italian player to uh, uh, guard these territories, lest the British snag an extra five IPCs, especially France with its high value of six IPCs, this means the UK could pick up 11 IPCs. It forces the Axis to not dead zone France. It's, it's too high of an IPC value to just leave empty. Generally speaking, this forces the Axis to build a strong Atlantic wall and keep an eye on British ships stacking up in sea zone 12 that could come into sea zone 14 to snag the Balkans. So, but you're not getting it on turn one. So let's go ahead and see where we are with the national objective money.
Okay, so I put a I put an asterisk over here for the United Kingdom. Again, they may be able to pick up five IPCs on that first turn. Probably not if you're playing a, a savvy Axis player. More than likely not, but it could happen. And then you're really, frankly, not going to see uh, much in terms of IPCs for a while. It, you could eventually um, overwhelm France or get it in a, some sort of a, a raid. We're not going to put it up there as an easy gimme. And then we come to Italy, and Italy is the only other power other than the Soviet Union that only has two national objectives, and they're both worth five. The first one is that if Axis powers control all the following territories, all four of these, Italy, Balkans, Morocco, Algeria, and Libya, and there are no enemy surface warships in the Mediterranean, they pick up five IPCs. So it's, it's very likely that Italy will pick this up on its first turn. The United States hasn't yet gone, and unless the United Kingdom invades Morocco, Algeria, it's not so likely that they're going to stick naval units in either of these sea zones so early in the game, as there's a fairly substantial Italian fleet in sea zone 14. It's not uncommon at all to see this go into the Axis pocket at least on the first turn. The final Italian national objective is that they'll gain five IPCs if Axis powers control at least three of the following. That's Egypt, Transjordan, France, or Gibraltar. So this is another national objective that's fairly easy to pick up. So long as the Germans have done the G1 attack, it's, it's relatively easy. You only need three out of these four. France is in your pocket, at least on the first turn, of course. The question is, which, of these, which two of these three are you going to take? Uh, Germany will most of the time have Egypt taken down. If not, the Italians can do a walk-in. And then the Italian Navy can either Amphib Assault, Transjordan, or Gibraltar to pick that up. So again, this one really is not too difficult to accomplish as the Axis. So we'll go ahead and assign the Italians 10 IPCs. I almost want to put an asterisk here because yes, the UK goes before the Italians, so they, they do have some say in the matter, but really not much. They're reeling from the opening German 1 attacks in the Atlantic and ostensibly in Egypt, and a, a savvy Italian player should be able to secure that on turn 1. Uh, you know, to say nothing of turn 2 and for the rest of the game. Those are fairly difficult to retain uh, long term, but turn 1, yeah. And lastly, we get to the United States, and these are fairly straightforward and simple, so I'm just going to kind of mow through these. Uh, the first one is the biggest gimme of all national objectives. As long as the United States controls <laughs> West, Central, and Eastern United States, they get five IPCs. I do not need to show you this. That's the easiest money to pick up of any power for these national objectives. Next is the U.S. will gain five if the Allies control the Philippines. Again, very simple and also incredibly difficult to do. If you don't repel a Japanese attack on the first turn in the 41 setup, you might get that. If you do repel it, I should say, you might get that. But otherwise, uh, if you ever get that, you, you probably already won the game anyway. Uh, the third one we already kind of went over. It's identical to the United Kingdom. So as long as the Allies control France, United States gains five IPCs as well. And finally, and this one's the most interesting, and I'll actually kind of roll this out on the board. Uh, the Americans get five IPCs if you control at least three of the following four territories. So here are the four territories. Again, the United States, or the Allies, I should say, only need to control three of these for the U.S. to pick up five IPCs. So yeah, this is essentially going to be a gimme, at least in the 41 setup on the first turn. It's not so in the 42 setup. This can be fluid. The Japanese can essentially decide when to deny the Americans this. Unless the Americans are going for a J1 strategy, the Japanese can devote resources to secure the Solomons in wake uh, relatively easily or with some expense, but it's not terribly difficult to deny the Americans this five IPCs. So here we are at the end of a, a very typical first turn of Axis and Allies Anniversary 41 setup in terms of national objective money pulled off the board. So it's very likely that the Axis have pulled 
30 IPCs, 10 for each power. And it's guaranteed that the Allies will pull at least 15. And if the British are lucky, they've got a five there. So that would be 20. But in the 42 setup, I'll just point out that the United States may only have five, right? Because Wake and the Solomons are under Axis control. So I'll just point that out. And then I'll make my first argument here. For the Allies to only pull essentially 15 IPCs off the board and for the Axis to pull probably 30 IPCs off the board is to diminish the Allied advantage of having a stronger economy at the beginning of the prototypical Axis and Allies game. Axis and Allies is a game of the Allies' stronger economy versus the Axis' stronger at-start forces and position. And that's sort of the balancing act. In my extensive playing experience, it's really not necessary for the Axis to have this bump, and it's actually incredibly disruptive to have this much money coming in for the Axis. The Axis really do not need all of this extra cash, and this is part of the reason I say it causes an imbalance. It's, it's too much, and the Axis can quickly overwhelm the Allies' uh, economy because of the ease at which they are able to acquire these national objectives. So that's my first point. There's two other, there's a second and a third order effect here that I want to cover as well. So one of the second order effects of having all this extra cash injected into the game is that it diminishes the effectiveness of strategic bombing raids. When you have more money on the board, paying off the damage tokens to get your industries up and running uh, doesn't feel as painful uh, when you don't have all that extra money. A third order effect of this, and this is, I've had friends of mine who play Axis and Allies who I really respect, really make this one of their main points as a problem they have with national objectives, is that it really does, it canalizes the script of the game. So if you're somebody that just likes to play freehand, you're not gonna like national objectives. National objectives really, frankly, force the Allies to focus on France over doing something else like, say, going for Finland and Norway. You're going to feel the burn of not putting a ton of pressure on France and trying to secure all that money that's there for the United Kingdom and for the United States. The Italians are going to feel the need to stay committed to the Mediterranean um, as opposed to perhaps helping Germany out in, in Russia. And the United States may feel overly incentivized to um, commit resources to the Pacific and trying to retake uh, lost islands that are of no value other than perhaps trying to secure that national objective. And this weighs heavily against the Allies. The Axis national objectives, especially Japan and Germany's, are basically picked up on the fly. They're picked up as they're moving in the directions they need to go to secure IPCs anyway. It's a lot more difficult to acquire your national objectives as the Allies when compared to how easy it is to acquire them as the Axis. It's, it's really two different playing fields. I like to analogize this by saying that if the Axis had no idea what their national objectives were, and the Allies knew exactly what theirs were, the Axis would still pull more money off the map. And that, in my opinion, is what's wrong with the rule. So l let me recap this very quickly. We went through basically every national objective and I concluded by arguing that this is imbalanced in favor of the Axis because it diminishes the Allied advantage of having a stronger economy at the beginning. And we re uh, went over the typical first turn for each of these powers. It diminishes the effectiveness of strategic bombing with that extra influx of cash into the game. And I'm not saying that's a, a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying that's a thing to consider when you're applying this national objective if you decide to use it. Third, it canalizes the storyboard. The Allies will go for France, the Italians will go for the Mediterranean, I gave those examples. And overall, I argued that this is a general negative for the Allies as their national objectives are much more difficult to accomplish when compared to the Axis. So that concludes this video. Let me know what you think about national objectives in the comments section below. I embraced for what comes, uh, but I did spend a lot of time studying up on this and a lot of, played a lot of games I didn't really want to play, <laughs> testing national objectives, uh, of course no bid, straight up out of box, 
So let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this. All the best from the good captain and bye bye.